Today, I'll take you through a tour of the hydrogeologic reconnaissance at several plant nurseries in the Ellis Mountains. Really, the question that we were asking was, what can we do about the lack of groundwater and therefore irrigation at these locations? We took a look at four sites. These were on the flanks of two mountain ranges, the High Atlas Range and the Middle Atlas Range. These sites are managed by the High Atlas Foundation. This is a, a fabulous organization founded in 2000. So the problem at these at these locations is that irrigation at some of the nurseries uh, is severely limited. Dry wells, low yielding springs. In some cases, we have poorly performing wells. And at least at at least one location or two locations, the new wells have been installed that do not yield water at all, or at least very minimally. So for context, I know not everyone here is a hydrogeologist. Let's just go through a few basics here. Uh, this is just showing a box model of a simple scenario of groundwater interacting with the surface water on the top left. You can see that during the winter when you have recharge events, there is ample water in the wells, ample enough to supply water for irrigation. As you move into the summer, water levels decline that's on the top right but there's still enough there is some water available but in prolonged drought periods shown on the bottom there's no recharge and the things become unsustainable in this case water level in the wells have dropped dramatically and in many cases they've dried out completely we're also looking at locations where there are limestone aquifers and this is a little bit different in that much of the water that's that's used for irrigation comes from springs and in fact, even some of the wells tap the channels, the, the flow channels within the limestone. And in some cases, you could actually hear the water in the well. We'll touch upon that later on. So the methods used for this assessment were rather straightforward. Let's look at the relevant, relevant hydrogeologic literature, geologic maps, of course, go to the sites, take photos, take a look at the characteristics and take measurements of an existing and importantly, abandoned wells. There are, <clears throat> we found numerous abandoned wells, at least one site, which provided great insight that enabled us to make some recommendations regarding how to access groundwater. GIS mapping, taking a look at outcrops, also what I'm calling wisdom gathering, going and speaking to local community members who have this experience and knowledge as to what was done in the past. And of course, communicating the findings is, is part of the, the methodology. One site, Enlu, this is the a, a picture. You can see the beds here where they're trying to grow these uh, seedlings. Right now, there's not ample water. And there are currently two wells on site. Well one, that one is uh, the older well. It's currently, it's nearly dry and no longer uh, used to produce water. It's just not viable. As a result, they searched for another location and they drilled this replacement well at the recommendation of essentially a, an illegitimate uh, contractors just using technologies that quote unquote find water somewhat miraculously. And unfortunately, that well was not yielding water because it was drilled into basalt. Basalt is low permeability, the pores are not well connected, except for the few fractures that connect to the well you're not gonna get high yields in these wells. So this was a really a failed attempt. So the question is, what should we do? How can we find water? Should we drill other wells or how can we find the locations? In this area, you can see the geology is quite complex. It's faulted. There are various uh, geologic formations in close proximity. And at this location shown at the top, it's difficult to really ascertain where we are. We're kind of in this transitional zone where we, we don't quite know what well would pierce a limestone rock, which is the lighter blue versus, let's say, a basalt or sedimentary rock, which is the dark blue and the, the, um, which, the pink. So how can we do that? Well, as I said, the first part is to gather information from local people here. We uh, found this fellow, this former farmer, and uh, we just visited him and spoke to him and said, hey, what do you know about pumping wells? How deep are they drilled? What kind of rocks were encountered? And he told us about the occurrence of volcanic rocks and locations where limestone aquifers have been tapped. 
واش كيلقاو ديما بحال هاد السخر اللي كاين ولا كاين شي واحد اللي كيلقى شي سخر من غير هاد كاين فين تلقى الحجر كاين فين تلقى هاد الدراري داك الشيء اللي سبيل مسكين ما كيتفلتت هو دغيا ساهل كان كان السادة ديري السامبيس كاين اللي كيلقى غير التراب يس This was very useful and it's part of our reconnaissance, just local knowledge. We also found several abandoned wells in the vicinity of the site. And in fact, the locations I'm showing here are accurate well locations just directly inserted into Google Earth without the need for surveying because we essentially visited these sites. So when I went into Google Earth, I could identify exactly where these wells were located and put down uh, markers, which essentially become uh, geo-referenced. So I'm just going to take you through some pictures of us visiting these wells, again, an abandoned well here. It's about a meter in diameter. We noticed a concrete casing. We see jagged bedrock waters at 14 meters. It's not really clear what that bedrock is. We can't, we don't have any construction logs or geologic logs, but we do know looking at the cuttings on the surface, a combination of limestone and basalt. So we're in this transition area where at least to, for, to some extent, this well is penetrating limestone and was a, a well that uh, could yield water in the past prior to drought. Another well, an old abandoned well, we were not able to measure the depth of the well or the depth to water because the cord was getting caught up probably on these big pieces of jagged rock. But when we put our ear to the well, we actually could hear the water, uh, some sound of water flowing presumably, and I think reasonably concluding that in fact, this is tapping a limestone aquifer. Another well, we just made our way around this area we saw some abandoned wells. You can see in this area, they're no longer uh, irrigating at all. It's uh, quite stark. Taking measurements of the depth and the depth to water. And this well is not operating but it is known to be high yielding and it's not operating, not because uh, there's not enough water, it's, there's apparently some family dispute on this adjacent farm and they're not using this, but it's known to be high yielding. And you can see to the right there, again, there are limestone cuttings. So this was a big clue here that this well is probably tapping this limestone aquifer and is, uh, can, can uh, yield sufficient water. In fact, on the, top, on the left there, you can see there are a number of plum trees that that's just a that haven't been watered in a couple of years but when you look back at the historical photos on google earth you can see this whole area was uh, very well vegetated so we do believe that this well is a good producer so now it's about integrating this data and this is a you can do this in a straightforward way taking pictures importing those pictures into something like powerpoint where you can then uh, append text and descriptions so that someone could just really look at these and understand the, what we saw, pertinent observations and so forth. Those images then can be imported into the georeference locations in Google Earth. And now you essentially have this interactive tool where you can survey your site and look at the different conditions, including notes and measurements and so forth. And pulling this all together, here's a schematic. We're looking at the three wells. Top left is that old well that's no longer productive. The middle is the well that's in basalt. And the one on the right is that uh, the well that's tapping a limestone aquifer and it's quite, it's quite uh, productive. So that's this well six. We know the depth and we know the depth of the water. So we're able to ascertain the height of the water and how far into, and at least an approximation that this is tapping into the limestone. The well that's not productive, well, that's just hitting, that's just tapping into the basalt, not making its way down to the limestone. Whereas this older well, we do believe that it did tap into a shallower portion of the limestone because we know it was very productive in the past before the drought. So really the issue here is that it's just no longer deep enough given the current water table. A solution is simply let's first deepen this well and see what what we get from that. That is 
before we go ahead and try to scout new areas and go through the expensive new wells, we've collected enough information here to reasonably conclude that this is what might be happening and this is a, a reasonable approach. Another site located south of that end loose site, which I just showed previously, again, this is in a, a complex geology. The blue is limestone. The, the pink is a sedimentary formation. Here's a picture from the site. You can see the mountaintops are basically the, the limestone outcrops in that center area are the sedimentary regions that form the basis for these farms. As you can see, there really is just not enough water currently to sustain the growth of these uh, saplings. And that's because the well that was drilled, shown on the left here, didn't yield enough water. But when we looked around, we found other farmers who have access to springs and they're filling up their irrigation basins, which then they use to water their down grading fields. And in fact, we did some further reconnaissance and found other springs. And here's another picture of a spring in the surrounding area. And I found this very useful free online GIS tool, which, which allowed me to plot locations, look at the topographic elevation contours and infer what was happening hydrogeologically. And you can see the red is the well that was drilled, but which is not successful. Here are the locations of the springs we observed. And by looking at the approximate elevation of those springs relative to where the current well was placed and knowing the depth of the well, a reasonable conclusion or at least hypothesis was that well was simply not tapping into that structural contact where the springs are emanating from. So the recommendation was to deepen this well several meters to tap that limestone. And in fact, that's what was done. And they successfully hit the limestone. You can see the cuttings in the middle. And in fact, this well was supplying sufficient water to that nursery. Let's take another a look at some other sites. Another site, this is located farther south in a different kind of terrain. This is in a, in a valley, sediment, a sandstone formation. We took a look at some wells. Here's an old well by a stream. <laughs> A more recent well, we're discussing some of the details, performance issues. Basically, this is about getting together with community members, half team leaders to understand the situation. And for example, here's a well. It turns out that this was successful for a time, but it's no longer successful. You have a lot of silt and sand that's being discharged, and it's just not viable anymore. And when you take a look at the surrounding outcrops, you see, well, we're dealing with this sandstone, which is very friable silts and sands. And, and considering the topographic relief and looking at our locations, constructing a draft cross section, we can see there's ample saturated zone that this well penetrates. Really, the issue is that this well is, needs to be redeveloped to remove those fines. So the recommendation is to redevelop the well. Don't go searching for new well locations in the expense. First, redevelop the well. Another location. So is, it, is this the, the, we're approaching the village where they have no access? Does this guy have produce in there? So is this the, we're going to his village? Yeah. Yeah. You can see here are the farmer on the left, quite extravagant volcanic rock outcrop. And here's some vistas is actually farming on this land. You can see here the farm on the farmland in the, in the forefront here and the terraces to the left. So this has all been farmed for many decades by families, but now with the persistent drought, the springs that supply the water are going dry. Uh, 
winter we can find more than the, this water. So another part of this is how do you communicate all of this? There are two approaches. Well, there are many approaches, but at least the two approaches that, that I wound up taking. One was a traditional approach, thinking that this was really the most appropriate, which is to write a formal report with text and figures describing the, the observations and the rationale for the recommendations. Another approach was after assembling this data and developing that Google Earth interface was just to do an informal screen recording where I talked through the work that we did and the observations that we made and, and gave the, the rationale for the recommendations. So the first approach, right, is the formal report. It's very time consuming. As we know, it involves figures, a lot of text and all of the grammatical review to make a, a, a form of a, a report that we feel uh, good about and that could be provided to people. Now, the problem is, of course, as exhaustive and time consuming as this is, turns out a lot of people are busy and they don't have time to read the report and the recommendations. Another approach, which I found to be much more effective is to simply record, do a screen recording of basically this narration of me walking through that Google Earth presentation and describing what we saw and the rationale for the findings. So that's a, a big takeaway that, uh, you know, kind of an informal communication, the building of a, I'll call it a database based on simple observations, and then communicating that in person, in the sense, in this case, by way of recording myself, that was a very effective approach. So I think we're just about at time. Thank you very much, and I will take questions. I want to acknowledge uh, some collaborators. Obviously, High Atlas Foundation is the manager of these sites, and I was there to, to assist them. Uh, I worked with the High Atlas Foundation and also many community participants.